to a region. And they usually identify this region to be somewhere in Iraq between the Euphrates and Tigris rivers. With regards to human origins, progressive creationists believe that all humans descend from Adam and Eve, and they accept the foundational Christian beliefs that humans bear the image of God and that all humans are sinful. Progressive creationists are conservative Christians. They accept the incarnation and the resurrection, and their ethics are biblical. Your most important progressive creationist today is Hugh Ross, who runs the organization Reasons to Believe. Now, you'll notice I've put in brackets intelligent design theory, or the intelligent design movement. It's a group of individuals that are pretty hard to pin down in terms of their exact views, especially on the Bible. But I would say the vast majority of them accept an old earth and reject biological evolution. So that would put them in the camp of progressive creation. Evolutionary creation. It sure sounds like a contradiction in terms. But it's only a contradiction in terms if one uses popular definitions, that is, Evolution is atheistic, with no God, and creation is origins in six literal days. But evolutionary creationists use professional terminology, whereby they are first and foremost creationists, that is, they believe in a creator. They believe that the creator made the universe and life through an evolutionary process. Theistic evolution is also a term used to describe this position. But personally, I don't like the term, and this is the reason why. You will note that the noun, which is the most important category in the term, is the scientific theory evolution. And that the word theistic, which of course comes from the Greek term theos, meaning God, whereby God is simply attached as an adjective. I don't like that inversion of order. I think God is a lot larger than any scientific theory. So that's why I prefer the term evolutionary creation. Well, what do evolutionary creationists believe? This will be a little surprising for many of you. Yeah, maybe some of you will even be shocked because most of us have been socially conditioned into believing that an evolutionist has to be an atheist. So evolutionary creationists, they accept teleology, plan and purpose in the universe. They also accept intelligent design. In fact, they'll argue that the evolutionary process reflects design. They accept the age of the universe to be in the billions of years. And you'll notice this is the first place in the chart in which a position completely accepts macroevolution. That is, and I'll use the vertebrates, that fish evolved into amphibians, which evolved into reptiles, which evolved into mammals. With no need of God moving the process along, rather God set up this process in such a magnificent way that it evolved all by itself under his supervision. Evolutionary creationists believe that God created the universe and life indirectly through ordained and sustained natural processes, more specifically, through evolutionary processes. And again, the words ordained and sustained are very, very important. First, ordained. God ordained this process. That means it was his will, it was his plan to use evolution as the creative method. And then secondly, the word sustained means he upheld the process all the way through and that the process is utterly and completely dependent upon him. If God decides that's it, well then the process and all of the physical world goes back into nothingness. Let me give you an analogy to help explain this notion of God using natural processes to create. Think about when we were in our mother's womb, when God, to use Psalm 139, when God knit us together, 
fearfully and wonderfully. I have yet to meet a religious individual who believes that God comes out of heaven and interventionistically, that is, dramatically, attaches an arm, a leg, or a nose. Rather, we see ourselves being created by God through natural embryological processes. So with this analogy, think about the evolution of all living organisms in the same way, in which God uses evolution, and remember, it is his natural process, to create all of living organisms and to make them fearfully and wonderfully made as he knits them through an evolutionary process. So, back to our chart and God's activity in the lives of men and women. Evolutionary creationists believe in a personal God. They have a personal relationship with God and they experience divine action that is both dramatic and subtle. In other words, these are evolutionists who experience signs and wonders in their lives. Evolutionary creationists believe that the Bible is the Word of God and that it was inspired by the Holy Spirit. With regards to the interpretation of the first 11 chapters of the Bible, they underline that there are three important features. First, there's a divine theology. Second, there's an ancient science. And third, there's ancient poetry. Evolutionary creationists believe that the central purpose of the Bible is to reveal a divine theology. In other words, the purpose of the Bible is to reveal inerrant spiritual truths that will change our life. Five of the basic truths that we find in the opening chapters of the Bible include, number one, God created the world. Number two, the world is very good. Number three, humans and only humans bear the image of God. Number four, humans, all humans have fallen into sin. And finally, God judges us for our sinfulness. Now, these spiritual principles, these spiritual truths, these are the ones that change people's lives and lead us to joyous living. I'll ask you now to flip your handout over to the front of the handout so we can get on to the second feature we find in Genesis 1 to 11. Evolutionary creationists also underline that there is an ancient science in the Bible. That is, that there is an ancient understanding of the physical world held by people thousands of years ago. In my mind, this is a central notion that needs to be grasped if we want to make sense of the origins debate, in particular of this view, evolutionary creation. Now, in the seventh lecture in this series, I'm going to focus entirely on this ancient science. But for our purposes, we're just going to look at a few characteristics right now. Now what you have before you is a diagram of the three-tiered universe that we do indeed find in the Bible. Now we don't have to go very far into the Bible to start seeing some of this. On the second day of creation, God creates a firmament, and that's exactly what the Hebrew word means. A hard, firm surface 